All right, guys, so welcome, um, everyone. Um, well, welcome to, <laughs> to three of you. Um, let's uh, chat about the uh, Conversion Lab today. So today we'll be going through uh, manipulating or kind of working with the GTM container or any GTM container for that matter. I'll be going through the lead hook one and uh, you can extend the lessons learned uh, to other stuff because it's been a common question we've been receiving in support uh, as well. Uh, where people want to go a little bit beyond what we're providing out of the box. Though it's fairly sophisticated, people obviously have uh, many other needs uh, that go beyond uh, this. So I'll cover a few use cases for that as well. Right, so that's the GTM container. Uh, I'm going to head over to Leadshook here just to show a little bit of the Leadshook functionality. Obviously, you don't need to be using uh, Leadshook for this, uh, but uh, I'll just life, life becomes easy when you do. So the, generally what you do is you grab a, a blank a container, put it here, you, your, you put your details here, you put your domain name here and you download and you upload. Once you've done that, it looks something a little bit like this. Now, what I wanted to share is the relationship between uh, between what this does and what Leedsuk does. Uh, in, the, in the Knowledge Biz article, I, I normally just share like, here's how you do it, because I don't think too many people are interested in the kind of like the theory of, of uh, what we're doing behind the scenes. So today's uh, session is all going to be about kind of going into the detail and understanding what's actually going on behind behind the scenes. So what Leadsook actually does, it it actually pushes a whole bunch of data into into the data layer. So I'm going to share that with you by uh, did I publish this? Yes, I did. All right. So just to show you, I'm going to copy this, and you can view this uh, behind the scenes as well. Uh, do a right mouse click, uh, inspect. Uh, it's basically using the uh, view developer JavaScript console. That's that's what I'm using here. Uh, and I'm going to be looking at console, get rid of all this, and just uh, trigger it. Uh, I think I have a fake one. So therefore, ETM itself is not going to fire. But as you can see here, uh, we're sending all this information automatically behind the scenes. That's how Leadsook is communicating with uh, with GTM. Uh, behind the scenes. And so as you can see here, there's the, the leads of data um, object and uh, on entry, what we did. So when we, when the leads starts, it does that. When you move to a different node, it will reset and blank everything out. And then it gives you the enter right here. So what is actually sending on, a, on the entry of a node? You can see that it's sending in the question. It's sending in the event ID, the event type. It's saying, is your Google conversion uh, enabled? or not in this. It's also got whether your Microsoft conversion enabled or not. It's looking to see if, uh, and, and the different uh, stuff about the about the node itself is all presented here. So everything you see on this node here, on the very first node, which is uh, this one here, <clears throat> this is actually pushed into, into the data layer. So just for the benefit of, uh, of uh, Tarek, hey, good to see you here. Uh, we're looking at Google Tag Manager in uh, Detail. And so what you'd find is, is all this information is now available. So, and we send this on every node on entry and exit. And in fact, on exit, we do two things. We actually do a reset before we send the entry. So it's, it's entry, uh, exit, reset, entry, exit, reset. And the reason why you reset is because um, a data layer variables, the information that you put into, into, into the data layer, such as your questions, answers, your, your node, uh, all the different stuff, it actually is persists. So obviously, if you, you don't want to send uh, uh, details on your first node, uh, fourth node about the stuff you sent in the first node. So we want to override that. That's the reason for the reset. So what the reset does, it clears everything up. Now, if you don't understand this and you're just building out your own container and you're like, yeah, yeah, I got this. Uh, these are the nuances that result in errors in tracking, which you don't have to worry about. And usually because we don't really share this uh, stuff, uh, uh, because no one's really interested, it's so so technical. Uh, but And that's the reason for it. Um, the, you get this benefit of, of these sort of little intricacies that we've taken care of for you behind the scenes. And that's what's actually happening here. So all this stuff, that's uh, where, where does it end up at, right? So we, we're going to go through here and look at our GTM container now. And you're gonna look at the variable section. And this basically tells you where, where the, what information is coming through from Leadsook itself. And you can see here, this are all the variables that we're sending. 
So that true or false value that you see here, so uh, let me just go back in here. Uh, it says here, that like, is, uh, is my Google conversion a true or false? Um, is my Microsoft conversion true or false? What we're doing is we're looking to see if you have triggered a conversion on this, on this node here. Obviously, it's the first node you, you won't, but that's the Google one. Uh, and if I had uh, if I had turned on my my uh, my Microsoft one right here, then you would see that option available here as well, uh, right next to it, underneath this. You'll see add Microsoft conversion. So if I come here and I add some stuff in, then it's true for this node. So then what will happen is is you will see that in the in the data layer itself, you'll see uh, that is rather than it being uh, it being null. Uh, you'll see that's true. And you'll see all the information such as uh, the currency, the conversion value, and all the different variables that you're pushing through from inside Leadzook appears in here. And this is what is populating all this stuff here. And then this is what's being used either in a trigger to see whether you should uh, execute this thing or not. Or alternatively, it's it, these, these are variables that are showing up inside here. So I'm just quickly going to go to Google here just to show you. And if I go look at my uh, enhanced conversion here, you can see these are all the data layer variables. All this stuff is coming from inside inside Leadzook. Now, how do you send it from inside Leadzook? Pretty simple. You just you just you know add your stuff in here. You'll go enhance conversions. You go here. You'll select your email field. We automatically populate all this sort of stuff. We're going to send that information into uh, from Leadzook. Uh, using this mechanism right here into the data layer. The data layer picks it up, populates all these different uh, values which are coming from here, and then they get entered over here, and then this gets triggered. So we have we provide you like a like almost like a zero touch seamless experience between what Leadzookers does just by ticking a bunch of boxes, sending to data layer, data layer maps it here, here into the tags, and so on and so forth. And that's why uh, whenever someone tells me that they want to build their own container and they're on using V2 of Leadzook, it's almost like you know you want to get your head checked or something because it's so much work. We we we've spent, I have spent, uh, you know, easily you know a couple hundred hours. Uh, that's including the the the, the time and uh, energy that my dev team has spent to make sure that every minor detail is correct. And there's nobody that I know is going to build a funnel just just one funnel is going to spend that much time in tracking. So why would you want to do all this extra work um, trying to do your own? Obviously, if you're not using Leadzook, then yeah, you know, knock yourself out. Uh, and you'll have no choice but to build your own container. You can get yourself a developer or two to do that. Um, the other thing is we, we've we've catered for things like enhanced conversion. These are quite painful to set up because you're going to need to send variables into, into the data layer using JavaScript and so on and so forth. And each time you start hacking and coding and stuff, there's always errors and, uh, and, and, and heaven forbid you break something. Uh, in that case, all your tracking goes to goes to crap and you're like, oh, it doesn't work and so on and so forth. There's some, and all this time, energy and money that's being spent in maintenance is largely gone. So it's not just the cost of implementing this, is to ensure that it keeps uh, keeps getting updated. In fact, we've got an update coming very shortly, hopefully by Friday of this week, that's gonna do a bunch of fancy stuff for you. So in today's little, um, little training here, or the conversion lab, I wanna cover two things. The first one is, uh, is what if you wanna add something that uh, you, we don't have. So let's say you have a Taboola, Outbrain, or you may be using some second, third year, third tier uh, mobile network or something, or you know some tracking script, optimizedly. Not, not, I'm not sure why you'd use that. We, we're already giving you server-side spit testing right here for free. Uh, go ahead and use that. But for whatever reason, you want to go ahead and add in some extra scripts and stuff. In that case, what you need to what you need to work out first is is can you leverage off what we've already given you. For most people, you will leverage off something like GA. Almost everybody uses GA or, or Facebook. They're the mo two most common ones. Everyone almost always has those turned on. If you are using GA, then piggyback off that. What I mean by that is if I go into um, my Google uh, view content here, which is this one here, it's being triggered. Uh, it's being triggered from this trigger, LH trigger uh, Google Analytics uh, view. So... I can't see why you can't use that because let's say if you've gone inside your decision tree, so let's say I've come over here and I've gone and I've activated all of those. I want to fire that on entry and exit, um, save, and I want to fire that on entry and exit, and so on and so forth. Uh, come down here and uh, uh, GA, let's say entry and exit. So my view content is fired everywhere and I want to just leverage off that, which means for every node on entry and exit, 
this thing is going to hold true, as in your, your Google uh, uh, Analytics event is going to hold true to, to, to fire that tag. So why don't we go and add, um, why don't we go and add a new one here, uh, like so, and go to HTML uh, tag, and you want to add your tabula, whatever the heck it is, uh, here, and you trigger it off that same thing that we've given you. So for example, you're going to be, uh, I think it was Google view content, if I'm not mistaken, Wait, it's this one here. Perfect. So each time this is true, it's going to fire tabula as well. So all of a sudden your tabula implementation inside when you're using lead hook is just become add your script in, uh, uh, sort of uh, leverage off or piggyback off, off, the, off the, the trigger that you're already sending or the data that's already sending and tabula is done. That's it. Your, uh, your, your tabula setup is done. We'll go ahead and save, publish, give it a quick test, make sure everything's working. So there's no need to go and reset triggers and tags and, or, uh, and, and any of that uh, code and scripting, any of that stuff inside lead. So just, uh, just leverage off what we're already doing. And all you want to do is you, you want to tag any other tag off this. So that's the first scenario. You're adding in some stuff that we don't have that you want to add, such as something like tabula native network here. We're adding in quite a few of these very soon, but let's say for argument's sake, uh, you know, because there's always going to be some network that maybe we don't have coverage for that you want to do. Let's say you want to, I don't know, Reddit tomorrow or something. Uh, that's coming too, by the way. So uh, anyway, so long story short, that's how you would add in the other stuff. The second one is if you want to have a, a second Facebook one, right? So you're like, hey, listen, I want to populate two separate accounts. I have two separate pixels. I just want to make sure that in case my account gets banned or something goes wrong, uh, I have another account that's seasoned with traffic and yada, 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 yada. So that way you can be up and running much faster than to wait for the traffic to rebuild uh, your audiences and so on and so forth. Let's see if that's the strategy that you want to play with. Something very similar, I will come over here and add in just another go to HTML tag because we already give you one out of the box. You want to, uh, no, not image, uh, discard <clears throat> new here. Uh, HTML, put in your, your Facebook one right here and you trigger it off the existing Facebook triggers, for example, view content, and that's done as well. So you would go then inside Leadshook and say, well, hey, what are the things that I want to that, that I want to track? Oh yeah, entry, exit, Facebook. What we'll do is we'll fire two Facebook pixels and events and stuff off this, all right? And that's basically in a nutshell is uh, that part is, is done, if that makes sense. So now you're populating uh, two separate Facebook accounts from the same infrastructure sitting inside inside Lead. So once again, you can save yourself a whole lot of time with all this testing and tracking and all that stuff to make sure that your implementation, at least your Leadsook side, will not need any work whatsoever. You may need to add an extra tag or two or some extra manipulation inside GTM, publish it, and you're done. Right, and that's the two basic. Uh, things that I've seen uh, that people get hung up on or get stuck on, and that's what you'd want to uh, do. All right. With that said, I will open it up to questions about this before we just open it up to any questions on anything. Uh, let me know if there's any questions about this. Quick question. Yep. Why would, because I, I've been testing and like it's yep. confusing. It's like, you know, for the entry on the tracking, why do you need to track on entry? Okay. So we have some people who, wanna let's say for example if, the, if it's a node like let's say phone number right and yes you could track the exit of the email or whatever the previous node is um yeah it's just it's just personal preference there's no reason not to not to do it in, in the early days so the reason why we ended, ended in because we have some people who are triggering uh time on node okay so they're tracking time on node uh we're providing that stat very soon so you won't need it there's only like one guy that i've known who, who tracks all this stuff uh, where what they're doing is they 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 are looking because okay so just to show you we we are sending in the event time that's actually a uh, it's it's called an apoc time it's it's this here apoc right, oops epoch time sorry not apoc time it's a unix time step so so uh, this is how the internet looks at time all right so we're looking at all this stuff you never want to do human time then it gives me that they you know my date time and all that sort of stuff we are sending this um with every node on entry and exit right so you'd see that on entry and you see the same thing on exit so what you can do there is you can deduce what is the time on on page with this sort of stuff so we had someone who was who wanted to track event time on entry and exit 
and they were tracking it either I think it was Google Sheet or J BigQuery or some some third party database system. And all they wanted us to do was to just pass the data across. So we just added it in. And it's a personal preference thing. Some people prefer to track entries. Some people just want to do exit. Some do entry and exit. There's no issues whatsoever as far as performance is concerned. These are very, very small scripts that operate really, really fast. You can track both and you can then pick and choose whatever you want uh, in terms of creating audiences and or custom conversions. Uh, you're not, you're not, uh, in fact, some people find it overwhelming. It's like, oh, this is too much crap coming. <laughs> so can I just do like the first node and somewhere in the middle and at the end? And that's fine too. You, it's, it's your business. We give you the infrastructure and architecture to do whatever value you want. You pick and choose what's gonna make, add gonna most value for you. I've never seen any downside to sending too much information anywhere. Because obviously you can only you can always ignore it, uh, but if you ever go three months from now, oh man, crap! I wish I had that information. Well, guess what? You can't you can't uh, you can't create information after the fact. So um, when in doubt, just tick tick both, and and use whichever one you want. Now, should in the future the need ever arise for the the other bit, uh, then it's already available. But if you don't already have it, then you will not get a chance to do anything with it. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Cool. Perfect. All right. I do have some questions here. Um, to create mm -hmm. audience based. Yeah, correct. Okay, cool. Thanks for uh, thanks for mentioning that. I will share that with you uh, shortly. I've just finished off the uh, the the uh, the the issue on on our development system. So uh, the the devs are gonna are gonna work on it today. Actually, uh, just for everybody's benefit. Uh, one of the issues, and this was a brain fart on my part, I should have uh, not missed this, but anyway, it is what what's what's done is done. So at the moment, what we're doing is is we're actually sending. So for example, this is a view content event. We are sending in your question uh, and your answer on two separate nodes. So if you want to say, hey, my are you a homeowner? Uh, you know, uh, homeowner or renter? You've got you've got the title sitting in one, which is the question, which is you know uh, you know or, or, you know are you a homeowner or renter, and the second one's got the answer, which is you know homeowner or renter. It'd be it'd be much better if if uh, if these two, if this like this was sitting like that, well, that would make more sense, or that would be a much better way to look at data, because now you'd see the title of the note, which is the question, and then you'd see the answer next to it, so you can decipher. Oh, cool! I want to get homeowners who are uh, who are, um, sorry, I want to get a homeowner rather than a renter for argument's sake or someone with a family or not family or someone who wants to lose 10 pounds versus five pounds uh, or, or whatever those options are. So this is being implemented, uh, but I realized when I looked at all the other tags we've got, so Microsoft and and, and uh, Twitter and uh, and Google and and uh, uh, whatever the other one is, uh, they're, they're all, they're all haven't been done that way. So So I had to quickly map everything this weekend and uh, uh, of, of that stuff, and there you go. You can see uh, uh, there you go. I was uh, looking at all the all, all the docs, making sure that I didn't miss uh, I didn't miss any any of the variables stuff. So I was going through all of the all of the documentation from all the different platforms just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And so that I'm hoping that to be added in uh, within by Friday. Now, for your benefit, let's say if you just want to make the change right now. Go ahead and add in what, it, what it, so let's say if it's if it's uh, if it's uh, a view content. So let's let's do a live example here. I'm gonna go to view. Uh, I think it's con yeah view content. There you go. So these are the are the variables that you have here. Probably the one that you want you want to use is maybe content name. All right, that's uh, that one that makes more sense. Um, uh, yeah, content name is probably the, the best one to use here. So I would come here and go content name. The title's already there. I would just go and grab that like so. Copy. I will come here and do that. And uh, obviously not this one here, save, publish, and that's it, done. So from this point onwards, your question and your answer both show up and you can go ahead and go and build your audiences and your custom conversions or whatever the use case is. Later this week, when we do the update, you don't have to touch yours if you don't want to. Otherwise, all you got to do is just grab ours, download it, and just do a merge with an override. I'll, I'll explain how to, the merging and overriding part on GTM with the video when I finally release it. But this would be the fastest way to do it. If you're just doing one one ad network, then just go ahead and do this. Obviously, if you're tracking all five, then it's gonna you're gonna have to update this about five times. Uh, but this would be the fastest way. But I think the question was related to Facebook. If that's you, then go ahead and just do this, publish it. So you don't have to miss out on three, four days of data. If you're trying to optimize right now, don't have to wait for that. Go ahead and just take care of this. Press it, save it, publish it, 
and no no real changes required inside inside Leadzoop. And that's the real power because all this information is already available uh, inside inside uh, inside our our variables here, right? Now you might even realize, oh, I, I, I want to use something else. And that's it. if you do want to go down that path, uh, you know, just come and look under the variables here and you will see there's a ton of information that we are passing across, including questions, answers, and everything else. So you may want to use one of the other things that we are passing, uh, wh whatever you want to use. So there you go, there's 50 here. I'll just go all. And you see that there's uh, quite a bit of information that's being passed across on every node from inside Leadsook. So. Uh, so, Jonathan, just to answer your question, I know it's not the most ideal solution or not the most slickest where you don't do anything. Uh, that's probably the fastest way to get this thing up and running, uh, but we'll be releasing it by Friday of this week. Uh, because the problem is now that we're going to do the update, I have to go through a full round of testing. Um, um, how do you mean, uh, Josh? Because we haven't touched this part of the code. Yeah, so in I was talking to Ben about it. He... Yep. Sometimes I'd get a underscore in my note yeah, title, and he, sometimes I wouldn't. Yeah, he, he mentioned that that he sent you a video about. Uh, I'm assuming you replied to it already. Couldn't figure it out either. Okay, all right, fine. Okay, I, I've already got a I've already got a ticket for for the team to have a look at that, so that they'll get they'll get optimized as, right. as well. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's gonna. I'm I'm hoping that to happen by by tomorrow. In fact, I've just yeah. So I had a chat to the dev team earlier today, and just so the, within the next day or two, that'll be updated asap. So there's uh, you don't miss any underscores, but otherwise uh, because I tested it and I couldn't I couldn't see an example, but that's okay. I'll, I'll follow up with Ben. I'll follow up with Ben is, for an example. Is there any way to see the output inside the lead hook UX so we can just copy and yeah, paste yeah, that? Yeah, in. yeah. So the best way to see it or the best place to see it uh, is uh, is 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 right here. Oops, uh, is uh, right here. Is right here. That's that's the that's what we are outputting. The other place you see it obviously is inside your GTM, um, you know, the preview mode, uh, which is uh, this one here, uh, pressing preview, and uh, entering your 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 URL. Uh, what's going on here? Okay, it's uh, working. All right. Anyway, you, you get the idea. Uh, when you preview, it asks for the URL. Enter Sorry, your URL. I, I saw yeah. you moved to the DT, but I didn't actually see anything. I'm sorry. I saw you move to the DT canvas, but I didn't see anything. I didn't see you oh, showing okay. it. Yeah. Sorry. This this part here. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. See that now. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. So it'll be all the information that we are passing will be available for you to see right here. Because obviously, in in order for GTM to see it, we need to push it, and that's what we do. Yeah. So there you go. There's, that's that's all the the all the information that we are sending. So that's the lead data under lead. You'll see that. Uh, you'll see the information about the visit. Uh, over here as well right so all the information that you want is all coming across here and then that is what's uh, populating uh, uh that's what's populating all this stuff right here so if so if you want to track to see what's actually coming through uh, there's two ways of doing it first one is to the the preview mode enter your your uh, your uh, site here the, uh, the 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 page where you are embedding a dt that would be the first thing alternatively you can check here as well probably the easiest one is probably just to do this and that way you should be able to see whether the underscores are coming through or not. And if they are, because I'd be surprised why we do it on some and not the other. But anyway, you know what? It's probably something we missed, uh, but I have I have brought it up. In the testing that I did, I could not see it. So when I reached out to Ben and Ben said, hey, I've already sent something to 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 Joss about it, but I haven't followed up with him yet. So I'll, anyway, I'll follow up with him after yeah, the call. Like some, it seemed like something that was there and then it's disappeared recently. Maybe it was a previous version of Lead Talk. Okay, but, but you're not seeing it anymore. on the Facebook. I haven't been able to set up the full tracking yet. Okay. All right. Okay. When you do, once you once you do and you run into any issues, just just reach out to us and I'll jump on a call with you and just see where where the underscores are. Probably. But in all of the testing that I've ever done and I've tested quite a bit, I, I've never had that issue. So that's why I'm like maybe something broke or something was wrong or whatever. Or it could be Facebook is ignoring something. You know, it like we don't want to we don't want to assume that it's it's just us doing the wrong thing. Uh, you know, Facebook's not known for reliability either, right? <laughs> so, yeah. All right, but but in in later this week when I when, before you go live, I'll do the full round of testing myself because uh, testing is one of those things that I don't like to push into production until until I've confirmed it personally. So I'll what make. What I'm sure... saying is, will it ever be possible to see this data and the actual lead hook UX rather than going through the console? Like you can just copy and paste it from the decision tree. 
Sorry, I didn't understand the question. So like the output you've got here. So yep. the name. Um, yeah. No okay, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. That, that that is available here. So it's 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 already in the in the uh, in the custom fields under the tracking. That that'll give you quite a bit of that information. Uh, and the other one is the if you look at event time and event date and all that sort of stuff. That's all available here. No, the, so, like the ones on Facebook. If you go back to the decision tree. Yep. Uh, go back to this right on the canvas. On the canvas, oh, this or oh, that this thing here. No, the canvas for the decision tree. Okay, which is this one? Uh, the DT which, canvas. Yeah, so yeah, decision yeah, tree yeah, is right. one. Right. Uh, there you go, like this one. Yeah, so it would be handy if we could get the details that would be are being pushed out to Facebook from the individual nodes. So if we clicked on like C data layer. Um, okay, we'll see if I can do that. Is this a, the data layer is controlled by the browser itself? Or we're just pushing data across. So the one uh, I wonder if I think we are doing it in this one here as well. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, I believe we are sending it here as well, if I'm not mistaken. But that's okay. All right, uh, leave it with me. Yeah. I will. Uh, right. I will follow up with the team to see what else uh, we can do about that. Yeah, be, it'd, use, it'd be useful to just see that data on the on the DT. So when you're like building out the custom Facebook audiences, you can just copy and paste it and simpler rather than going through each of the nodes one by one on the console. Okay, all right, cool. All right, uh, uh, let me make a note of that. I'll just write it down here. All right. Just down. What exactly are you looking for? You're looking for the thing to build right the audience. Now I'd love to get the node title and be sure that I'm copying the right node title because Facebook's like a black hole when you're trying to make the audiences. So you have to know what you're adding before you add it. Yep. So I think I've created an audience at the moment, but I'm not entirely sure, sure whether it has been done properly. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Let me uh let me uh see what we can do on our side. Uh because Facebook is not getting any of our variables, it's getting the actual title. So the so the format that we're sending for all this stuff is basically this information that with mm -hmm. uh, with with the lowercase uh, and underscoring between spaces. That's that's the rule. So if you want to see this inside inside Facebook and we ignore the so that could be where the the underscore is coming from then. Correct. That, that the underscore has to be there, otherwise Facebook will start ignoring partial data. So this we have to send it like that. With the okay, that's what's probably happened then. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes it, in Facebook, I'm seeing no underscores, which is weird. Okay, all right. Okay, well, you know what? Uh, I'll follow up with Ben to see if I can find an okay. example. All right. All right. I think um, that's uh, that's done. I'll follow up on that later. Uh, any other questions? Let's open it up. Tarek, got any questions? Just one, uh, one. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yep. No, not for me. Okay. Cool. I think I'm curious. Uh, uh, I think I'm curious about like uh, audience targeting across different marketing channels. So, for example, if within this tool, um, you've managed to, and I think correct me if I'm mistaken, you've done it through like content name, where you're able to build out different audiences, like yep. i.e. homeowner, yes. Yeah. If I'm able to then specifically through Google or Twitter or whatever, go after the Facebook audience and vice versa. So basically what I want to try and do is like segment the audiences that I've built from specific marketing channels and yep. take advantage of that in other market. Uh, so typically it would be URL, but obviously this is, I think, all event-based. Yeah. Um, so how right. would that look? Okay. So, all right. So I'll answer that. Great, great question, by the way. Uh, this is something that I've been talking about for a few years now. Um, and um, let me bring that up here first. So I shared the example with Facebook. Obviously, we're, this is not really teaching people how to do traffic and stuff. So I, I only created one article, but this applies uh, across the board for everybody. So a custom audience inside. So for example, this is the Facebook version of it. You're talking about Twitter, LinkedIn, and anything else. 
where what you're basically doing is, uh, I'll see if I can zoom in here, um, where that data that you see looks like this. It's gonna be that underscore, do you own a home? And uh, and the answer here is yes. So what 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 are the changes we're gonna bring up? It's gonna have, do you have an owner, own a home? Underscore yes. So you can actually say, give me an audience like so, where I'll be looking at, uh, let's say this content name. I'll select that option right there, content name. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select. In fact, what 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 Facebook does, it gives you, you just type it in, it pre-fills it in because it's say because it has the that that prem. So then it'll be home, home, yes or no. And you pick yes, and that'll be your custom audience. So that would be for remarketing. So and a good example there would be someone who said yes, and and you'd go in, there's an and option here, um, in this UI here, uh, to say, and they got to, for example, the email node. So email is yes or something. So now you're getting people who have reached the email node, but not, for example, the, uh, the uh, let's say, for example, uh, not example, the, the phone number node. So that's someone who dropped off at that point because you can do inclusions and exclusions. So now that's a remarketing audience of people who've previously seen you. But you can dial it back a little bit and say, listen, I just want homeowners, yes. And I want to do a 1% lookalike on that, on that audience and see what happens. Right now, you yeah. could then also do one a a one percent for renters, and you can do that that as an exclusion. It doesn't work all the time, right? Because obviously, you know, you you you're working with a data set that perhaps Facebook can't work out. But the AI is pretty smart, and every so and and not every so often, but it can get it right from time to time. Now mm -hmm. you're the only guy on the planet now with that audience because you're working it off of of uh, of events that you've fired based on people who've come through your DT. And if you've got quite a few months of traffic to play with, that all of a sudden is a very, very interesting audience that nobody else on the planet has. So in your case, if you were to say, let's say, listen, I'm running Facebook traffic, but I'd like to find these audiences elsewhere. Pretty simple. All you got to do is just come to GTM here and turn all of these on. So there's going to be your, your, your TikTok one, there's going to be Microsoft and your Twitter. Let's say for argument's sake, if you're only running Google traffic at the moment, uh, or just say just Facebook traffic, and you want to find audiences inside TikTok, this and that. You can go ahead and enter these details in. And when you do, what you're gonna find is, you're gonna see this same entry and exit stuff that that UI will pop up here as well for TikTok and for Microsoft and for uh, and for uh, Twitter. And so what ha what's happening now is you're actually sending the data that is coming from Facebook traffic and you're populating information in those other networks that you currently are not bidding in, i.e. You're, you're using one traffic source to build audiences in other traffic sources. And now that information, which is all this, the homeowner, yes, no, and the other, is available there, which means you could fairly quickly build a lookalike audience on those networks and launch a campaign and see that if it works out for you. Because now not only are you working with some third-party audience, you're actually working off of your own primary data source. And uh, based on the research that's coming out, there's quite a bit of commonality between between uh, the, the the traffic networks. It's They're not quite as... As, as as distinct as what we think we are. So, for example, the 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 uh, your your typical customer is, is on Facebook, is on LinkedIn, and is on TikTok and Twitter and wherever else. It's not like oh, the Facebook guy never turns up elsewhere. So you could so the audiences are usable in other platforms. I'm assuming that's what you're asking, correct? Yeah, correct. I, I do have a couple of questions off the back of that. Um, sure. So the first one is: uh, is there a risk of double counting from a conversion goal by adding all the other no um no cool second no. question is uh you know how with remarketing obviously uh, and other market channels you've got to have a certain um sized audience for it to work uh, yeah. does your tool pre-populate uh an an estimation like kind of like what google does in terms of based on so if i do too many filters i.e if i did the um homeowner yes plus email node plus x obviously the more granular i go the smaller the audience will That's your tool great. actually kind of pre-populate to give me an idea of what that number will look like so i no, know that because, the, because no because that information is only available inside i suppose you could get some idea based on the volume you're moving through say like let's say i've got hundred thousand leads coming through then based on so, that you could get some idea but facebook and google will automatically tell you what that is uh, anyway when you go and finally build the build the audience out out there so uh so not in the exact sense of what you're thinking of but mm -hmm. having said that you could um so here's what i do recommend everybody else does um and i'll share that with you now and that that'll give you uh in fact you know they'll give you very precise information 
not not on the lookalike audiences because obviously we don't know what what the uh, but we can definitely tell you on the audience size and what you could and so you would do this and this is something I recommend everybody uh, you webhook here uh, into into for example Google Sheet so all of the questions answers and everything you've ever generated on every DT uh, pro, uh, make sure make, obviously it's being market centric here so if it's for solar then make sure all the solar goes into one place. Um, it, irrespective of how many how many funnels you you run. So once you set it up like this, you save it as a template, and you could go through Zapier or however you want to send it into a Google Sheet and or any third party database. Now what, what's happened is no matter where you've run the campaign, how you've run the campaign, all the data is sitting in the one place, and then you can essentially do a pivot table and very quickly work out what is the the number of homeowners that came through from Facebook for you that went ahead and convert or not convert. And that will start giving you some idea about of the total volume that leads hooks saw. And based on that, you will say like, okay, cool. It looks like 30,000 people should be, have popped up inside Facebook because that's the information you have. Look alike, obviously, I don't know what Facebook and Google is going to find you off that, but at least the, as far as the customer audience is concerned, absolutely you can with quite a little precision as to what the actual, actual data out of leads hook has been. So while we don't quite provide that, a pivot table functionality inside leads hook, at least not yet. That's something that we're looking at. Uh, that information is easily available just by doing this. In fact, anybody who's doing any lead gen should actually do this and, and send this information over to your, your own database, irrespective of whether you're sending it to clients or to your own CRM or wherever. Because having a nice uh, uh, pivot table or a Google Sheet, I should say, makes it really easy to slice and dice data because you can put filters on top and all that sort of stuff and very quickly work out what the... What, what the total number of people that have gone through and what answers they're looking at. Because the other way you'd use that information is like, oh, well, I didn't realize that everybody's converting is because we provide you with geographic data as well. So just to kind of, um, this is probably the most valuable part of the whole app. Um, we we populate all this for you automatically. We, we use a third party data provider that gives you your GOIP data, your daylight saving data, your region, uh, the security levels, uh, you know, and all that sort of so on and so forth. Uh, we also give you the device data, right? Plus, we automatically track all of this, all of this, uh, all of this tracking data. So we track your your click ID, your pixels. So you don't have to worry about any custom scripts and all that. This is automatically all tracked for you, and you can just add that into whatever you want to use it for. And so, so because this information is available now, you can push it into into your uh, your Google Sheet, for example, and you can now slice and dice the information. Say, well, if I were to look at a geographic bias in my data set. Where are all my conversions coming from? Let's say uh, you know you realize, holy shit, they're all from, they're all from the I don't know West, uh, you know Los Angeles, and no one from the East, uh, LA is buying, but I'm still bidding there. I just didn't know that, and so now you're like, you know what? Let me just do a different campaign in East LA versus what I'm doing in West LA because West is working. I'll leave it there. I'll 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 save my money. I won't spend anything in that in the geographic area where things aren't working. Now you can look at it at the state level, uh, city level, and or you know, national level, or international level. And, and that is a really quick and easy way to, to give you some analysis as to what's actually going on. Plus you can also add in a couple of questions here and there, which, I, which I'm a big fan of, which is like, hey, what is your motivation to buy today? You know, well, you know well, why did you wanna look at solar today? Well, and you can, now that it starts giving you it starts giving you psychological data and or reason data or some kind of data around what is the motivation for wanting to do do that today, and that now shows up in your Google Sheet as well, and you can really go like, wow, I didn't realize that people are wanting to buy, for example, solar because they want to save the planet or something, or they want to buy solar because they want you know cheap uh, you know power bills uh, or whatever because the neighbor got it or something. And and that all that extra information that they, they become now data points of what you can do with your copy. Because that's like, I didn't realize that people who are, who are converting are converting for these different reasons. I didn't even know that. So let me go and make that, those edits and changes now. So what's happening is your decision tree, not only is it getting you leads, it's also becoming a market research tool, which you then are using to change uh, your ads, your targeting, your copy, your imagery, and all that other stuff. Does that help? It does, yeah. I, I do have quite a few others by uh, other questions, but I don't think it'd be fair to other guys on the call. Okay, well, uh, well, I'll, well, we'll come back to you. Let me uh, move cool. to move to uh, sure. Jonathan now, and then I'll I'll come back to you after this. Uh, I don't think I, no, I'm good. No, oh, you good? All right. Okay. Well, Tarek, back to you. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so, next question I'd have is uh, in terms of 
um, omnichannel, so people running like Facebook, Google, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, one thing that I would be curious about is, is there some sort of IP recognition side to uh, V2 where it identifies, okay, people have answered certain questions on one channel uh, and maybe they've come through another channel and hopefully cert those questions are still pre-populated based on IP address, for example, so that they don't have to start from the beginning. Um, and the second thing is also click fraud aspects. So if we're seeing especially around search arbitrage, because so many people now are using Google partner platforms, uh, yeah. especially through like Taboola and Outbrain. And as a result of that, like people are just getting so many clicks and spam and it's not really um, actual users, like a lot of it's bots. So I'm just wondering if there's like a black box around that, that hopefully can be functioned across basically sure. all the users that are on, on Leadsweek. Right. So everyone saves money. But yeah, cool. I, I suppose the first thing would be the cross cross channel side where, does it actually identify, okay, this IP address has actually come back to your landing page through different marketing channels? Uh, and if so, that we can just exclude that, if that makes sense. Yep, absolutely. So if someone comes back, um, now if, they, if they're on the same device, that's obviously uh, cross device, we don't have that functionality. You can use some third-party cooking cookie syncing functionality that's out there, but it's becoming less and less effective. Uh, for obvious reasons, because uh, you know people are blocking what you can track across devices. So provided they're on their phone and they came from a Facebook ad and then they came from your email or they came from, I don't know, let's say TikTok or they came from YouTube. Uh, that, yes, absolutely. Now we have a, uh, a feature here, uh, which under details here, which says uh, restart uh, from the first node. Now, if you tick that off, we do read the cookie. Uh, and so depending on, um, and we, we store it in a few different ways. Um, and so we are able to identify when the person returns back. And so if that's the case, then they'll start off where they left off, actually. The, the, so, you, so let's say, for argument's sake, if you've got 15 nodes here, um, and they let's say finish on the seventh node, then it'll, it'll actually reload from the seventh node is what the information that they did not give. So they can just continue onwards. That's one way uh, that we do have. Most of the people that I know on the high volume side, they usually... Uh, just present either a message that kind of like, you know, hey, welcome back or something. Uh, but you got to be careful about IPs because obviously, you know, cause we are reading the cookies. So that's that, that's the way, one way we know where they say welcome back and they just kind of make them go through the whole thing. So that's a personal choice. I, I just test it out. Anyone at, at doing real big volumes, I haven't seen that to be that much of a needle mover. Yes, it makes a marginal difference. So do test it out. But anyone at, at volume, I've always seen uh, by by volume, I'm talking about you know, ten to twenty thousand leads a day in some cases. Um, so they will usually have just start from the first node, and uh, we don't. So that's your cross device func functionality. You you can bring in third party tools that allow you to cookie sync um, and any other nefarious methods used to track people across <laughs> devices. <laughs> uh, let's just leave it off the record here. Uh, we do have people who use that. Uh, and so you can absolutely, uh, absolutely deploy that yourself. We don't have anything natively inside Leads Hook for the simple and main reason is that is that there's a lot of people out there that are tracking these tools, and we don't want to be blacklisted as a tool that that already has that as a, as a core functionality. Obviously, you, we allow you to add in any other third-party scripts that you want, so you can continue. You can obviously do that. So that's the answer for for that. We don't limit you because you can add any scripts you want anywhere. That's the whole point. It's an open system. Add whatever you want. Uh, your second question was related to uh, the fraud thing. Yep. So we've added in a little bit of, uh, so that was what I was showing here under custom fields. Uh, you will have a uh, population of data under geo IP, uh, which is, uh, which is, let me just load up here, um, that the security features here. We've I've got an update. I've just planned uh, what we what extra information we want to add here. That should coming in uh, hopefully by the end of the month. So we're adding in a lot more detail about what that is. We've also changed our data provider and the quality has increased uh, dramatically. So this this field automatically get populated. And what you can do then is to add a decision node, which is the the yellow one, and you can actually kick them out uh, by kick them out. I'm talking about not kick them out. You you want to take them down a a pathway that makes them look like they're actually going through a real, a real funnel. Uh, so mm -hmm. come here, I'll go to geo IP and it would be the, whatever the uh, security. So for example, let's say, I don't know, 
uh, let's say you've identified, uh, I don't know, this is a proxy or something and you don't, and you don't want the proxy equal to, it's true. So you can actually kick, uh, build this person uh, or take them down a different path, give them the same questions if you want to, or different questions, uh, and just uh, leave them in the decision tree. Don't push the data onto, onto your client or whatever. That's one way to keep your funnel clean. But another way to do it would be to go down that pathway. Let's say you come to secondary pathway. And what you do is you fire a different conversion pixel here. And then what you do is you add these people as exclusion audiences and or lookalike audiences on, on the and of telling Google what to not do. Now I'll share this because Google and Facebook both are not motivated to remove this traffic. Um, we've, we've across the board, we've got some, uh, we, we pay a third party quite a lot of money to track just a handful of uh, high volume clients, just so that we can understand where the fraud is coming from. Um, it's uh, we're seeing anywhere from thirty to eighty percent fraud, depending on the day. That's how much amount of fraud that's coming through. Now, obviously, Google and Facebook can remove it if they want to. Uh, more so, uh, Google, where the fraud is coming from, like YouTube. Uh, but they obviously, you know, nobody likes to take a thirty forty percent haircut on their revenue. So I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, and so what you need to do is you use these tools to create uh, audiences of fraud and then tell Google not to send me those people. That is the best and only solution that I've seen that works at scale. Everything else, uh, uh, nothing else really works out there because you're trying to stop your spend at Google. And the only way to send uh, is to stop the spend at Google is to change how targeting happens at Google and, and or Facebook or whatever it is. And unfortunately, that uh, unfortunately that uh, is not so simple, and they're not motivated necessarily to kill the traffic off. So that's how you end up doing it at scale. Right. Yeah. In fact, uh, there was one guy. Uh, they asked me to do a funnel review, and I looked at the data, and I shared this in the in the tracking SOS course, uh, where they were spending. Um, uh, they showed me their their business model. It was quite interesting because they were getting paid ninety days in advance. And uh, so they always got cash. And I said to them, I said, I said, are you doing any accruals analysis on the weekly numbers that are coming across? So your accruals PNL. And they're like, no, we just, uh, you know, because we get paid, you know, 80 days, 90 days in advance sometimes. Uh, we don't really worry about uh, tracking profit. And I said, if you have a bad month or two, I said, you won't know until you, the bill comes from Google and Facebook and you realize you have no cash left. And they're like, oh, we've been doing it for five years and it never happened. And that's exactly what happened to them. They got an $800,000 bill from Google and they don't, didn't have any cash left. Because what was happening was because the fraud had increased, as a result, uh, their, the, the number of leads that were being rejected had increased, but the media buyer was never told this is what's happening. So the guy, the sales guy is giving credits saying, okay, well, they're bad leads, fine, we'll, 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 we'll credit those. Yeah. But the media buyer is never told that the amount of uh, the amount of uh, fraud mm -hmm. is increasing, and 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 it never really they never really the, the the team didn't talk to each other they never really clued into each other that that if effectively uh, the amount of fraud that has increased and uh, until it was too late so so yeah so you no matter what level you're at you need to do an accruals based PNL at a minimum on a weekly basis this is where you align the spend and the revenue you're making. So even if someone rejects a lead five weeks from now into the future, you want to take that, that, that rejection or the refund or whatever it is, uh, and, and put it back on the day that you actually sold the lead. Cause then that way that week's P and L is correctly reflected. And if you do this over eight, nine, 10 weeks, you'll get a very good idea about what your benchmark rates should be. So what is the typical conversion rate? What is your typical revenue per lead? What is your typical cost per lead? What is your typical profit per lead on a week by week basis? And what is your typical refund rate look like or, or returns or whatever it is? That way, if any of those numbers deviate too much, you'll know straight away and you won't face uh, a situation like the way that these guys faced. But good question. Anything else? Not from my side, <laughs> thanks. Cool. All right, and awesome. Such no worries, man. <laughs> I do this every day. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody else for any other questions? Nope. All right. Well, so, yeah. So, so one release is a 
on a tracking update will be end of this week and then the AI Correct. the end of this month. Is that what it is? Uh, sorry, the, the tracking update, yes, end, end, end of the week. What, what's the other update you asked for? You know, the AI page builder. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. So I'm working on that with the team right now. I'm hoping, hope, let's hope end of the month, all right? Uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's an, another couple of updates we got going on. We had a few people request like, you know, postcode updates and, and all that sort of stuff. So we've got a few extra things that are in the, in the pipeline. I'm hoping within with, by the end of the month, I'll give you an update by Friday, okay? Because uh, the team was, quite a few team members were off because of Ramadan and all that stuff. So everybody's back on board now. So I'll, I'll get a better idea by the end of the week about how we are tracking and I'll, and I'll, uh, and I'll let you know. Sounds good. Awesome. All right, guys, if there's no more questions, we will uh, call it a night. Uh, same time, same place next week. Have a Wait, good afternoon. Yeah, so yeah, any question? In a group, like they're using like, um, what is it called? Um, uh, high level? Yep. With like uh, these book embedded in high level. Why would they do that? I don't know why they would do that because um, high level pages aren't really known for speed. Uh, I guess convenience because everything's consolidated into one place. We used to see a lot of click funnel people, uh, a lot of people doing it with click funnels. Uh, now that's moved to 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 high level. That's the only reason why it's convenience. Um, right. Now, yeah. So, but you can embed it anywhere you want. You can do it on you know, WordPress or whatever. Uh, quite a few of the big volume guys still use WordPress. Uh, not because it's no here or there, but because you can manipulate the page speed aspect of it. Any of these third-party platforms, uh, you know, there's obviously limitations in what you can do. Um, so mo almost, actually exclusively, almost everybody's using Go High Level these days with uh, with their backend systems, i.e., you know, email automation, uh, SMS automation, all that, all that stuff. Uh, some of them continue to use Go High Level pages with a lead hook embed. Uh, others use... Unbounce. Uh, I think Josh on the call. They 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 use a lot of unbounce. Uh, uh, we've got quite a few guys in the UK that are using WordPress. Quite a few US. In fact, one of the really uh, 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 one of the biggest uh, life insurance guys on on the platform. They they use uh, still use WordPress. Yeah, we use unbounce to pay traffic and uh, WordPress for organic. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's I, I think that's the only reason is, is is the convenience and there's enough people out there who know how to use GHL. Uh, Tarek, yeah, just for your question, yes, absolutely. As as things change, I am making updates to it. Uh, I think I have a round of updates coming uh, in the next um, month or so, where I'll be updating uh, some new stuff that I've learned on the on the tracking side. But if you find anything that's looking a little bit data, you want some changes, just put, post in the Facebook group saying, "Hey, you know what? Uh, I want to learn a bit more about this than the other," and I'll go and uh, make make the either additional video directly in the Facebook group um, as a, as an additional supplementary stuff. And or uh, you know update update the course itself. Um, so yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's it's one of those things that that hardly anyone does correctly. Now, not a lot of people respect uh, that tracking is so important, especially at volume. Um, in fact, there was a there was a one funnel that, I, that I'm re referring to here. They, they spend about five mil a month um, on insurance leads, and uh, and I don't know, a dev broke their tracking. And it took about 48 hours for all of the leads to dry up. That's how hungry uh, the ad networks are for, for conversion data or for good quality uh, data. So, yeah, now, now Tarek, just, just for information, I don't, I don't know if you've been using V2 for long or if you are even on V2. Um, you, you obviously, you know, one of the things I do recommend everyone do is, uh, is to use the webhook node to do server side and client side. So you can do due duplication. That's, uh, it just makes, makes life, uh, life easy for. Uh, for tracking purposes. Uh, there is a server-side update coming where we are doing server-side for Twitter, uh, link, uh, not, uh, all, all the ad networks are going to be built in. So just like how you see an option here for client-side, there's going to be an option here for server-side. Just tick the button, server-side's done. Uh, we don't see any need for why you should be hacking with code. Um, so yeah, but that's the current solution. Easier than most other platforms, but not as easy as it could be. So we'll be adding that in very shortly as well. So that way, because the complexities when you add client, client and, and server is you do duplication. How do you manage all that stuff? And uh, while it's not difficult, it's uh, it's sometimes, you know, people get it wrong. So we want to make sure that's no longer an issue for anybody. So, sorry, just on the track, SOS, if I do that course, that 
and I'll know how to do the whole setup that you've literally, like as an example, what you've gone through today. No, no. I'll know how to in do fact, in fact, if you yeah. if you're looking for just if you're looking for just the lead hook side of things, then uh, mm -hmm. I would suggest just go through this first. I prefer people not to overspend and overbuy stuff. I know there you go. I'm doing a terrible sales job. Uh, just go through this first, <laughs> uh, and uh, just go through this first. And this pretty much covers the bulk of what you would need to do from a setup perspective. Now, if you want to learn a bit more, uh, and you definitely, do, I don't think you need to, at, at least uh, based on uh, the information we've covered and the abstraction we've done, which is we've moved all the complexity behind the scenes. Now, if you really want to understand what's actually going on and how to fire events on every node and all the all the manual hacking stuff, then I'd suggest uh, you know go to the course. But if you're just going to use Leads and you just want to track and you have a good, pretty decent understanding of how data layer works, uh, as in without having to manipulate it with uh, with uh, custom scripts and stuff, uh, this is uh, this will do the job. Uh, I don't think you really need to, uh, you know, waste time you know learning about tracking. But once you've gone through this and this is uh, and you're like, hey, listen, you know what? This is not enough. I want to really go deep, or you're tracking non lead hook stuff, uh, then uh, then by all means go ahead and do that. Uh, we've got people using lead. We we've got people who are adding in lead hook DTs. Like that thing there, in a in a one by one pixel, and they're using the the the, the infrastructure we provide to to track to do the tracking, um, because it's cheaper than it's cheaper than getting a a, a tracking solution. Interesting. Yeah. Next thing. Oh yeah. So just to answer your question. Uh, don't get it yet. Uh, you go through this first, and it might meet your needs. And if, that, if that's the case, then you just have saved yourself a bunch of money and time to, to go and do that. But in that, I do cover Reddit, uh, Taboola, and all the other stuff. But the, it all repeats after a while. It's just, you know, it's pixel event and some server side. And as long as you're, you know, you have some awareness of that, uh, probably server side probably adds most value. But, uh, but even then, I just go through this first. And then uh, if you need it, uh, you can always grab that later. All right, guys. Uh, no more call. Uh, no more questions. Then we'll uh, do it same time, same place next week. Um, I believe the calls are being already being uploaded. I'll make a post about it shortly after I confirm that they're bloody up there. Uh, but I think it's going to be much faster now. So hopefully by tomorrow, if not the day after, they should be all up in the uh, YouTube channel. Otherwise. Amazing. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, same time, same place next week. Uh, look forward to chatting with you all soon. Have a good day. Yeah. See you guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye.